Welcome back to the Passive House Show, where we talk about all things passive. We've got a nice little tight, quick, simple episode for you. My name is Mick. This is the real host, Paul Keeley. We are calling this episode Passive House versus Affordability. You know, maybe that's a good one because it's... Um, well, I had it written know, down as Build Smaller. <laughs> <laughs> build smaller yes building smaller is the answer you know and, and it's gonna become a trend all right well let's get into this intro mm -hmm. we were out in Perth last winter and we went to this little community hall meeting I guess to talk about you, you gave a presentation about passive home and uh, there was a gentleman there that relayed a problem to us it was in Perth Ontario and he said you know, we've got a, a, an affordable living crisis out here. People are moving out to Perth, young adults, uh, you know, people in their mid-40s or mid-30s or mid-20s even. They're moving out there, young families. Within a year, they, they buy a house and then within a year, they sell that house and they go. And he said, the biggest problem we have is all of our homes out here are friggin' huge. They cost a lot of money and then they cost a lot of money to run. And people cannot handle that. The, the The cost of living is too expensive. The cost of land and real estate is too expensive. And what do we do? And that man was very excited about what we were presenting, which was the concept of building passive, but not only building passive, building smaller. So let's go through some numbers we went through in a previous episode. Um, the average monthly utilities in Canada per month are $348. That equals around about 4000 well, exactly, $4,176 per year. That is for a code-built home. Passive house homeowners are paying, on average, $50 a month on utilities, which is $600 a year. And if they're not on the net metering program, they're paying $100 a month and $1,200 a year. That is still even even having a house like that and having utilities that not on the, that are not on the meet, net metering program is still far more cheaper to run than than a code built home, no matter what. Now, how do you help these people when they come to you and they say we want to build, but we don't know if we can afford a passive house? It really is a simple formula. Now, the guy in the audience there at, at in, in in Perth, I I remember that. And uh, what he was saying is completely true, right? And ultimately what he was taught, referring to, um, any, any newer home built in the, you know, ultimately in the last 20 years, you know, a lot less cost to build. And, you know, ultimately because of that, uh, people building or builders building um, a lot, you know, bigger size homes and because per square foot, less cost, if you can afford it, people, you know, ultimately building more square feet than they need. And what we try to focus on now is building only a number, only the number of square feet that you do need to comfortably live inside a home. So absolutely not can uh, no one afford to build anymore from our perspective, our communication, our direct experience in the past couple of years. Just build smart, build, build smaller, you know, and uh, really be cognizant of eliminating unusable hallway spaces in homes. Um, reducing or coming up with smart storage solutions. So we put we frequently put false floors, storage floors, call them above closet spaces, utility spaces, washroom spaces, and in a lot of the homes we've built, to ca tallying up this square footage, you know, ultimately empty uh, square footage space in most homes. Um, a lot of the time, two to three hundred square feet. In most homes, even around the 12 to 1500 square foot range, um, we're able to integrate this additional square footage with smart storage solutions, and that's all your storage space. Yeah. So it eliminates someone building a basement simply for the reason of uh, requiring an extra couple hundred feet storage. And very small utility spaces, you know, are, are natural to passive home. But mm. um, our demonstration home recently. Uh, completed just last year, four bedroom home, 1500 square feet, uh, very affordable, you know, pre COVID five years ago, that same four bedroom home would 
typically be somewhere between 2,000 and 3,000 square feet. Mm. So the sand, the person that could afford to build uh, 2,000 square feet five years ago can't afford to build that today. Cost exactly. of construction has gone up 25 to 30%. Shrink the footprint, and that same person can still afford to build uh, just a 1,500-square-foot home instead of a 2,000-square-foot home. We've done it. Um, our customers have done it, and uh, it's easily done with smart approach to design. Beautiful.